Bam! We streaming. All right. Welcome to Friday, everybody. It's time for the Ham Radio Crash Course. Got a good, interesting show because I'm doing this blind. I'm pretty much going in blind. If we build a laptop, we build a laptop. If not, we'll have a lot of fun trying. Uh, last stream I did in the middle of last week, I'm pretty sure, something like that. I set up a Raspberry Pi to do SSTV. And I'm going to take another Raspberry Pi and put it into a laptop. And we're going to do Chat is Broken. Already. Already we've got problems. What's it going on? The technologies. Why do we always have to fight the technologies? <laughs> Let's see if that fixes it. There we go. Chat's fixed. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. I had a little bit of fun uh, getting this all set up. I was uh, sounding like an absolute chipmunk when I was setting this up, so it was hilarious. It was absolutely hilarious. And yes, if you see this, we've got a giveaway going on. Spawny420 uh, donated some money to put together, um, you know, one of these little new elect kits off Amazon. I'll be giving this away, or one of these. Actually, I'm just going to ship it from Amazon at 7.49 p.m. So if you have not already, go to the Discord link downstairs here and go to the giveaways chat room and click the little horn and we'll watch it go up. We've got, we're at 47 people right now. 47 people for an SDR. And that's interesting because we're going to be working with an SDR uh, today in the laptop. So the idea behind this laptop is basically to have something that's smaller than a traditional laptop, but not super portable, that you can uh, take and use in the field, and you can do other SDR fun stuff, and of course it's a Raspberry Pi, so that's fun to tinker with. It actually has some pretty interesting attachments that um, I was immediately interested in, like a breadboard attachment. I'm very excited about that, and I'll show it to you uh, very shortly here. But anyway... We are the Ham Radio Crash Course. This is what we do every Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We move forward with Ham Radio by learning a little bit more, practicing, doing different things. And as we implement and exercise what we learn, we will get a little bit smarter. And if you do that long enough, you're going to be a master in no time. So that's the idea. Uh, links for the Facebook group, the Discord, and everything else that we got going on is down in the description couple of news items. Um, I was on the Gentleman Scofflaw podcast uh, today, and we talked about amateur radio, a little bit of prepping, a little bit of uh, personal freedoms. So if you like that kind of stuff, the link is in the description, gentlemanscofflaw.com. And I was on the W5KUB chat last Tuesday, and I got to meet uh, Dave Kassler, which was a lot of fun. And Katie was there, and, and Tom was there, and everybody else. We actually talked a little bit about uh, hand Hamcation. So that was very cool. I'm not going to Hamcation this year. I'm going to Dayton Hamvention, but um, I would love to go to um, Hamcation. That that seems like a lot of fun. So very excited about that. Brew Crew from a Brew Crew in the house. Thanks everybody on the on the uh, patron side. The Brew Crew today. I have a really special beer. This is the Nitro Modern Times Black House Coffee Coconut and cocoa this thing is a it's not a beast in the sense that it's high alcohol it's just really good this is actually only 5.8 percent which um if you've watched any of my videos you know that's relatively low so i am going to just drink this right out of the can because i can guarantee i'm going to knock some stuff over today so i'd rather have a can that i'm okay to break than um than deal with the glass and particularly one of my nice glasses i don't want to break Mm -mm. Okay, so I'm looking at my dog. It's over there snoring at me. So what we're going to do, let's show you what we got here. So this pile of stuff um, underneath it is a laptop. So this is my Raspberry Pi enclosure with a fan and an SDR play. We're going to use this SDR play. Let's get that to the side. Um, I've got some dongles, which I, I don't think I'm going to mess with today because I, I don't want to mess with the software. I'm going to make it a little bit easy on me today. RTL SDR and a new Elec NE SDR. These are all fine. Um, Raspberry Pi. This kit doesn't come with a Raspberry Pi, so you're going to need to get your own. I'm looking at the chat. 
Right on. Oh, man, we got a lot of people in the chat right now. 100 people watching. That's pretty good odds for the giveaway. I should probably wear it. There it is. Giveaway's down in the corner. We've got a good amount of people there. So giveaway for an SDR. You can't beat that. Let's fix the camera a little bit. Oh, we got James Hannibal in the chat. Excellent. So James is sending us some um, QRP, some quirky QRP keychains to give away. And then my, there we go. Jeez, I'm having all kinds of technical fun. So he's sending us some quirky QRP keychains that we'll give away on, um, on an upcoming stream too. I think he's sending us one of every band. So that's fantastic. Um, that's very cool. That's a cool little thing. And we tested that live on the stream. So that's a lot of fun. So uh, the other thing we've got is a, a speaker. So this goes into the laptop. I'll show you in a second. But I want to note something. So the way this works is, you know, the Raspberry Pi has those GPIO uh, pins. Well, this basically extends it, and it creates kind of a rail system. You know what? I should just show you. Let's dive into the box. I think you only need one screwdriver, and I've got that here. And we'll get the Raspberry Pi out of the way. So I shout out, I'm not affiliated, but I like these Exolite uh, screwdrivers. These are great little electronic screwdrivers, and they're cheap. Okay, so I'm going zoom out. Here we go. So this is the Pi Top box. Um, I got this through adafruit.com. It comes with a lot of DIY kit type stuff. Let me see if I can tilt this up here so you can see it. Let me get rid of the Discord for a second. So um, basically, this whole laptop keyboard slides forward, and you can slide devices onto the Raspberry Pi and create like an accessory rail. Okay, so you can do all kinds of stuff with this. You can actually fit the SDR Play into this laptop, not as an external connection, but actually in the laptop. Which is, come on, come on, green screen, come on. It's not the green screen's fault. It's my uh, camera. So we're gonna. I'm just gonna open this and get this box out of the way because this thing is huge. The laptop is smaller. Um, there is some. I'm not gonna open that. That's the kits. So comes with some cutouts, a guidebook, the laptop, the inventor's kit, and the power supply. So we're going to need this because it's got the SD card in it. This does come with an SD card, but um, I'm likely just going to use the SD card from the Raspberry Pi that I'm already using. I have already taken the uh, power supply out because I charged this. And let's get this behemoth box out of the way. Okay. So uh, just a couple of things. It is fairly non-standard in its size because it's kind of a wedge shape because the Raspberry Pi sits in the back here, right? And you got an inventor's kit. Why must you challenge me with the blade? So it comes with a couple of sensors, some LED kit stuff. Um, the biggest thing that I was, I'm, I'm really the most into is this breadboard because it's going to break out this GPIO and it'll have another connection here. So you can start daisy chaining devices together like the speaker, the breadboard, etc. So very, very cool. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do with this if you want to play with circuits and whatnot. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. It comes with pins for doing breadboarding. Um, like I said, the LEDs, buttons, all kinds of stuff. Uh, this is a really cool kit. I got this for, I think it was $250 off of the Adafruit website. A little expensive for what it is because it is a, um, it's a Raspberry Pi computer. And I, I probably wouldn't use this for anything other than ham radio related stuff because I just don't think it has the, the power to do much else. So I'm going to slide the keyboard out of the way so I've got a little bit more real estate. And I'm going to drink some delicious beer. Let's turn the Discord back on so we can track that. Looks like 71 people right now that are in on the giveaway. Thanks again to Spawny420 for doing that. You didn't have to do that, buddy, but I appreciate it. I'm going to throw this camera into the river. Why are you doing this? Jeez, I hope you can, you can see the noise, right? The noise around me from the green screen. Okay. Maybe it's... No. Oh, you know what? We got to do this. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All 
I'm gone. <laughs> All right. That's enough fun. Okay, so laptop, pretty standard. So basically, what's cool about this and what got me so into it, this is Gen 2. They've made a Gen 1, but Gen 1 basically had this like black plastic thing that you slid out of the side of it. it had a really compressed keyboard and a really compressed trackpad. And they said, what if we did a full laptop keyboard and a full laptop clicky touchpad? Well, how do you do that? Well, you make this whole thing slidable. So it, the whole thing slides down to give you access to this rail system. And the accessories bolt into the rail system. Um, super cool. I'm, I was like, all right, all right. I'm very much into this. So how this works is you've got this, let me, let me go back here. You've got this breakout, um, board here. And what it's basically doing is it's connecting to the audio connector and then a USB connector on the side of a raspberry Pi. And then this heat sink goes over the top of it. So I'm going to pull this heat sink out. Okay, so this heat sink, it's got a heat bar attached to it, and it actually has, I think this is the HDMI, but I'm wrong, I could be wrong. No, this is the HDMI. This is uh, some kind of connector to allow you to connect some of the stuff over. I'm assuming it's also USB, because you can connect things via USB as well. Um, and then it's got a tiny little tool that you can just leave connected to the, the rail. So it's magnetic. I love the tool concept. I like the ability to have it all with you. Excellent. So I'm going to take this Raspberry Pi, um, take this guy out. And you've got to, do you have to remove before creation? So you got to unscrew this thing? Okay. Never mind. Apparently I have to remove some more screws. So with this, ideally, oh, I, I know what I have to do. I have to reuse these screws. So let's not throw those away. Um, ideally, with this, I'm going to be able to do um, W uh, S J T X W S J W J <laughs> W S J T X F T eight is basically what I'm going to be able to do with this, and some of the other applications that are available on Linux, and you'll also be able to do all of your SDR work. Bear Bass says, "No offense, I think I'll pass on the giveaway." I have as many SDR dongles as I have holsters. Two drawers full of each. No offense taken. It's free. Why would I be offended? No, you must take my free thing. You must take this free thing I want to give away to you. Um, so USB, there is a USB connector down in here that you may not be able to see. And so that's in part um, going to give some port access to this breakout box or this breakout bar. It's probably what shares this port over. All right. So your uh, Raspberry Pi is going to slot in here into this port gingerly. Oh, let's make sure you do it right, buddy. Of course. Oh. Well, hello. Don't force these USB ports. They seem to want to go weird on you okay there we go um probably a good idea to connect your sd card it looks like once you get it in here it's not very hard to um to swap one out so instead of playing around with the stock one i'm just going to try and boot up the sd card that i know is already working so i'm going to connect the guy here that I've already been using as an SDR and already have WSJTX loaded, so connect him in. Nice thing about this guy, this card too, is it's 64 gigs, so you got a lot of space, although you don't really need it. Don't force this. He's. Let me show you if I can. So there's these ports right here that you've got to line up to the ports on the Raspberry Pi. So take your time when you're connecting this and make sure these are pretty square. Perfect. Okay. 
Now we come back with the with the three with this being a three hundred to three hundred and fifty dollar investment, wouldn't it be better to buy a cheap, faster laptop? Or is there more to it? Um, yeah, because you can put everything, you can connect everything into the laptop. Um, if you're not interested in that, that's that's fine. Um, the Raspberry Pi is kind of more of a tinkering device anyway. So you know, I, I don't I don't blame anybody if they don't find interest in this. Why are you not going in here? This is kind of a niche thing, but there's a lot of people out there using Raspberry Pis in ham radio, so. Excellent. You can put a tinker board or other SMC into it. Yes, exactly. I will mention for those watching, uh, there will be a Discord after chat, as we always do for those that are new. This screw is really being a pain. Why is it not biting? We're not catching the threads. Okay. That's interesting. One screw went in perfectly smoothly and easily, and the other one, not so much. That guy, no problem. All right, well, we'll go with that for right now. And then you slide in. So then you slide the little adapter card on the rail into the HDMI and the audio jack. Take your GPIO splitter out here, which also functions as a heat, heat distribution rail. Ooh, wait a second. Wait a second. I think I'm supposed to read the directions for this. There's something. There it is. I remember hearing about something that I need to do. That, uh... Heat distribution rail is too high, or it wants to seat too low. No, not the directions. <laughs> what directions? Yes, I think uh, somebody got it. And if you open this, important thermal... Oh, geez. Important thermal pads. So... This is the 3B plus, and this is the older model, the thick pad. So you've got to scrape the heat pad off and apply the thin pad. I'm glad I looked at this because that wasn't going to fit. No, they're in uh, full on English. Not Englishy at all. Okay. Taking a little bit of time to get the adhesive off. Razor blades are cheap, but heat distribution is important. I have a Pi and a Bluetooth keyboard using an old tablet. I'm in for less than 100. Yeah, no, absolutely. You can do this for a lot less. Uh, I'm no, no problem with that. Um, and don't get me wrong, I see no problem with that. I kind of like that this is all enclosed, and I can throw a breadboard into it. I can have an SDR on board. I think that's really cool. If that's not something you want to do no problem oh good they're not separated or anything so you're kind of on your own if they don't uh come on making steak while watching right on Okay, only one of these sides is adhesive, which um, makes sense because you're going to want to have it pick up. So make sure you attach the adhesive side to the heat sink. 
What's unfortunate is there is not a lot of ham radio apps that I have had any luck to get to work on my Tinkerboard, even though it's better specs than the Pi. Huh, so is that just because there's not any versions of it out for Tinkerboard? Okay, let's get this heat sink back on there. Oh yeah, that's much better. So this isn't gonna connect until you screw the and you put the screw back in. So don't try and force it. Just get the uh, GPIO connector on the Pi down the the fat side, and then go ahead and get the screw in. Uh, apply a bit of pressure to get it down. Okay, so um, that's technically it. It has internal speak or uh, internal batteries. So you can just power it up if you want to. I'm going to connect the speaker. And these are uh, magnets on the bottom of these things. So it should just click on, and then you can just slide it into place. Slide it into place. Or not. There you go. So bam. So now we have one attachment, which is the speaker which you see here and then there's now a new gpio so if i wanted to take the breadboard which is also magnetic and i could slide that into place boom so now we have the speaker which has a follow over or not a follow over um a wire connector on the other side so you can plug the the, uh, the breadboard into it Ugh. but we'll leave that out for now and it's all magnetic so you just slap it on and slide it into place which is really cool is you don't end up with a hat on hat on hat. Yes, so Andy Andy shoots St. Louis, exactly. So instead of stacking up hats, you're really just sliding them over. That could be good or bad because you could run out of space eventually. But anyway, let's see if we did this okay. Color. Cover up my beer here down in the corner. Don't be looking at my beer. Can you? Well, it's pretty washed out. Well, um, it's a laptop. What I'm going to do. Come on. Okay. Oh, I think I've got to get used to left click, right click. Yeah, okay. So uh, we're now a laptop. That was easy. Um, um, Gerald uh, asks, that is cool. Can you run two speakers and run it in stereo? Uh, I don't know. I don't know that question. Don't know the answer to that. What is a breadboard or what is exactly a breadboard? A breadboard is um, very in. What happens when I close this? I want to see what happens anyway. So let me let me do that real fast. Oh, the screen does turn off. OK. OK, cool. Well, that was one thing I was curious about. I didn't know if it was going to do that. So let me turn the, the camera back over. So this is a breadboard. How this works. Oh, this is a proto board. This is a bit different than a breadboard. Uh, but basically, you can take any kind of uh, electronic component and you can connect it in these horizontal lines. And they go, you know, one through however numbers down. There's usually some kind of middle connector. And this middle slot is just wide enough for you to take an integrated circuit, an IC, and connect that down the middle. And then basically each of those legs of an IC, you can connect wire jumpers, uh, resistors, capacitors, whatever you wanted to do. And usually on the outer edge is where your positive and return lines, your negative lines go. So you basically will create your circuit with just plugging in little wires on the breadboard here uh, for whatever you wanted to do. I, where is that? I had a project. Well, shoot. I'll have to do that another time. Well, you can go back over some of my other videos. I made an FM transmitter, an FM audio transmitter, again, with the, 
with the cameras, buddy. I made an FM audio transmitter, kind of like a, a, a bug, like a bug camera. And um, I was able to basically prototype the whole thing on something like this. So yeah, you can make like a listening device, whatever. So what we're going to do, since we're here and we got the speaker attached, I'm, uh, I'm not going to connect the SDR. Actually, I, I might. We'll see how I feel about it. Uh, but my problem is I have too long of a cable. My cable didn't come in the mail in the appropriate amount of time. So I'm just going to connect it to the back of this guy. Okay, SDR. And I have a listening antenna here. My kind of broadband dipole. I'm going to connect that guy to the SDR play. And let's open her back up. So we do have Wi-Fi, and I might just do this another way if this doesn't look okay. It looks all right. So let's let's go ahead and try this. See if we get anything. So let's run GQRX. See if it picks up the um, STR play. Nope. And let's go full screen. The speaker works! That was half of my concern, actually. And the volume control works. Ooh. Oh, you know what? Here, let's do this. Does this help at all? Oh, that was satisfying. I don't know if that helps. Will the SDR Play fit in the Pi laptop? Yes! That's why I bought it. So you can slide this down. Ooh, look, we got lights. So you can slide this down, and here in this uh, space, you can take the SDR play out of the box that it comes in, and you can fasten it with the with the magnetic runs. They line up, and you can connect it in here. It doesn't have the same GPIO output connectors, but yes, you can absolutely do that. So close it back up. Let's go ahead and mute that for a second. All right, so for the heck of it, let's uh, change frequency. Let's go to uh, 446640. And we'll change this to oh, receiver options. Why are you not where you should be? Get back over there. Yeah, I'm going to remote into this in a second because this is getting even hard for me to operate. So we don't want upper sideband. We want narrow FM. And oh, come on. There it is. That's uh, the spark repeater. Oh, what? I bumped my camera. So that's the spark repeater. That uh, audio quality is not great. I'm going to have to work on that. But we are listening to one of the local repeaters that I am on most often. Not a great speaker. What is going on with this camera? Stop it. Okay, let's try to mute. Okay, so it is actually muting, and I'm going to try to remote into this thing. So give me one second here, and I'll bring that up on the screen, and then we can see if we can remote as well. Because that's my big thing, is I like the ability to remote into these units. Let's see. I don't think it's going to have the same IP. I should check that. Nope. Yeah, so there is a speaker port on the Pi, but the speaker port gets connected into by that GPIO. So we're going to do if config. Yep. 
Wait, why are you doing that? I said 209. Looking at the chat here. Does the Pi Top have a speaker port? Uh, yes, it has a speaker port, but it gets filled up by the by the speaker when you connect that connector post. So this should be 209. There we go. Cool. All right. Let me let me share this screen. Give me one second. Okay. So there's our, our Raspberry. This is the laptop. I've just remote desktop into the laptop. So let's get him a little bit bigger here so you can see. So we're back into the desktop. And I'm going to, oop. What, just, what did I just do? There we go. So I'm going to close this guy. So via the remote, let's see if I can unmute. I can. Uh, let's make it 300. Is that the maximum squelch? Uh, I am using the remote desktop app that comes with the Mac. Why are you doing this, my friend? Excellent. Okay. So we now have uh, a remotable laptop that I can put the SDR into, and I will be able to, uh, to listen. But let's not stop there. So let's close out of this guy. Let's connect the 7300. I don't even know how cables go into this thing. What there's a somebody can look this up. There's a internet law that for uh, every it takes exactly three times to connect a USB cable because you have to. Uh, Flip it at least once <laughs> or something like that. At least two. It's never the first time. Okay, so we have the laptop connected. We've got an SDR connected, which will go live inside of the laptop. We may have enough time to do that. I'm running a WSJTX now. I'm going to throw this camera. Camera? Camera? Somebody stationed... Somebody stationed by me? Uh, you just go in and click it. How are you going to get the antenna out? I'm going to drill a hole in this baby, Zach. All right. So we don't have it connected yet. I'm doing this blind. I'm going off my best recollection on how to configure um, the, w, or the 7300. I already have my call sign connected. Uh, the rig is going to be an ICOM... 7300 is down here. There it is. Uh, one second polling. It is 9600. It is 8 bits. It's 1 bit. Default handshake's fine. Split operation is rig. Cat is that guy. Uh, ooh. What is the serial port? It is TTY USB. I know that for sure. Okay. Let's. We've got our 7300 connected. Yeah! Yes! Ooh. No. Stop. Oh, is it? Stop it!
Okay, it's transmitting to my 7300, so let's turn that off. Why are you doing this to me, kid? <laughs> oh, camera. Audio. Oh, dear God. I didn't expect to have so many options. Hmm. I don't like that. Let's start it back up again. We are 14, 15 minutes from the contest, so make sure you get in before it goes off. I'm going to go ahead and stop this guy and close him. Okay, that's good. At least when I turned it off, it released the 7300. Zach, I would be impl uh, inclined to agree with you, except... Dennis Dunderdale's in the house. What's up, buddy? Yeah, it's turning on the transmit automatically. I don't like that. It's transmitting right now, or it, it has the... Ooh, what is it doing? Oh, it's my... It's taking a hold of my radio. Dean says, I'm a new general. What's up? Awesome. GQRX is such a nice program, says Evan. I also really like uh, Cube or Cubix SDR. And I really like um, SDR Uno. SDR Uno is really, really nice. Okay, let's try this again. I don't like the uh, the transmitting. At least it's in data D, so now it's not picking up my voice. But it's going right into transmitting, so that means it's not doing this correctly. 7300. It should be USB. It's not letting go. Why are you doing this, buddy? And it's taken over control of the radio. And good. We are definitely on low power. Okay. Maybe that'll get rid of it. Is that going to get rid of you? Do you have DTR DSR set to enable transmit? Um, I don't know. The, the radio is set up to appropriately transmit, and it transmits on other, so, uh, other computers. Uh, it transmits fine on my Mac and transmits fine on my... Uh, no, it's not. It's not DTR or DSR. It's just cat. See, so you, you even go over this, and it's not. Well, let's make it Vox right now. You gonna stop? No. Any way to turn on more light over the green? Now I've got so much light on right now. It's crazy. I might just want to turn this off. Maybe this is causing some problems. Hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, see, it's jumping right automatically into PTT, which it shouldn't be doing. Well, that's bothersome. Oh, handshake to none. Is that why? That can't be why. No, data stop bits is fine at one. Didn't stop. I can't even manually unkey it. People are saying set handshake to none. I'm repeating it. Yeah, I did that too, and it didn't seem to stop. Uh, yes, remove the lock file. Okay, let's turn the radio on. It's very easy to set up, so I'm likely just having one thing. No, it went right back into it. At least it's not transmitting anything right now. So... Right, it is the correct USB, although it's still setting this to TTY AMA, which I don't like. Um, none. One is the correct stop bit. It should be on the data packet mode. It's set to rig. RFI on the USB cord. No. It's just stuck on PTT right now. So I'm going to set this back to Vox. Yeah, it doesn't let it go. So something's going on. Something is going on. I'm going to disconnect that just for the heck of it. Let's disconnect that guy. You know what? I'm also just going to restart, restart this guy as well. What the hell? Let's do all of it. We're not going to be able to get much done because I only have my hex beam, which means I'm, I'm topped out at 20 right now, 20 meters. Reconnecting. Remember, I'm remoting into this guy, so... Um, open on your Mac and clone your settings over. I already did. It's It's basically, that's the same. I'm pretty sure those are the exact same settings on my Mac. No. Wah, wah. Okay, well, now I guess I will do it. Oh. No, I'm not reading the manual on that one. I've set up WSJTX on so many things. 8, 1, none, rig, data. Juan Carlos, buddy. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, cat. Should be cat. Um, Juan Carlos, if you have a question, um, please post it. Recompile everything. No, I will not do that. Nope, this is it. Um, baud rate is set to 19 though, but that doesn't matter because I ran it both ways. Okay. Perhaps call up the BOFH. Those stories were pure confidence. <laughs> So someone is saying RFI in the cord. Okay. I will I will I will try it. Alright. I have a big old bundle of these little velcro y things. Let's change this over. 
Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Todabert, you're the man, buddy. Thank you. Go check out Todabert's YouTube channel, by the way. Doing cool stuff with shortwave radios, which is awesome. All right, so we've got a couple of coils. That looks like three. Okay. Okay. Who said coil? Wait, I'm going to go back. Who said coil? Pat Hopkins. All right, Pat. This is you, buddy. This is for you. Hang on to your butts. Oh, wait. Nope. Sorry. It's a nice idea. I wish it would be that simple. Uh, let's change this to 19. Attempt to connect. Yeah. Just stop PT ding. Okay. 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 Why do you think that you need to transmit? It's like it's got it's got switch. It's all switched up. Somebody says RTS. Okay. It looks good so far. No. It's clicking there, so it should be picking this up. RTM. Okay, somebody's saying RTM two stop bits. We can add a pole interval. That will help sometimes if you've got a slow connection. No. Okay. It's closer. So we it's it's engaging the radio. I can hear it click. Sudo. Why do I need a sudo? It's a desktop shortcut. I installed it with sudo. Oh oh. One minute until we have Discord. One minute until a winner is selected. Okay, well, it's no longer keying the radio, but it can't connect anymore now. So let's bring the polling interval back down. It's clicking the radio. No, that didn't, it doesn't like the two. Well, we lost something. It's it's not it's not DT it's not DTS or RTS. Now. It's going straight to transmit. Now I I did, tried with the 96 too. Well, I went into this blind, so um, I, I didn't expect it. Well, actually I take that back. I did expect this to work because I have literally ran WSJTX on every platform. I've ran it on Ubuntu, uh, Mac, Windows, maybe that's not every platform. This is the first time running it on Raspbian though, which is still Linux, but, um, not behaving. This is identical settings, by the way. Mode. None. You usually leave DTR and RTS empty. It's on cat. It's supposed to be. Um, well, what the hell? Let's just... No, because it's the right port. It's actually clicking it over. Oh! No. Wait, who won? KN4QRP David. All right, let me stop this for a second. Congratulations to KN4ORP David. Where are you at? Are you in the chat, buddy? Uh, he might be over on uh, on the Discord side. Oh, cool. There he is, David. I think it's David E. Is that right? Are you David E? Congratulations. That's excellent. Thank you so much for watching. And thanks, Bonnie420, uh, for, for letting us do this. Because he PayPal'd me and said, give a, do a giveaway on an SDR. So 
you're getting a you're getting an NESDR from New Electric. Um, I'm going to send this from Amazon directly to you. And it's a full kit. It'll come with antennas, a, a, a mag mount, the SMA connector. It's a nice kit. It's I use this, the kit of antennas that come with this, I use that over the... Um, over the RTL SDR. I prefer this SDR to the uh, RTL. This is a, a better SDR in my opinion. So same price for those two kits, but if you want a better one, that's the one I recommend. And that's linked in my Amazon store if you go down downstairs to the Amazon link. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm gonna fool around with this a little bit more, but I'm gonna turn the call-in light on. We got 10 minutes here, so I'll take a call in if somebody wants to call in and chat. And I'll also be listening to the chat. And remember, we have the after Discord chat. So what would we accomplish today? We got the uh, the laptop going. This guy. Got the laptop going here. Um, got the SDR. Well, the SDR play is working, um, which we kind of expected. But it's working with the laptop, and I can remote in the laptop. It functions like a laptop, has a closing screen, has a speaker working, which the Raspberry Pi didn't beforehand. And now I just need to get WSJTX running. And we've got a portable um, ham radio laptop. Because, you know, it's already portable and already a ham radio laptop. But you know what I'm saying. Let's get this Discord sized right. Okay. <laughs> Out of curiosity, how do you join the giveaway in the future? You have to join uh, the Discord chat room, which Zach is posting links to. Discord is an IRQ chat room that um, is a standalone system. It's a secure chat area. It's like an old uh, AOL chat room kind of thing. It also has voice chat. And we have a special Discord set up for Ham Radio Crash Course. And so we get a ton of people you know, that are there for the community of asking questions, uh, setting up QSOs, and just having fun because we've got memes, a lot of Ham Radio memes, which I, are my favorite, to be honest with you. Oh, somebody calling in. Who do we got? Uh, where are we? Where are we? There we are. Hey, you're live on the stream. How's it going? Uh, hi. Um, it's going pretty good. Um, my name is Taylor. Taylor, I how's it going? Hi, and um, I had a, a question. Um, it's about something you said a minute ago. You, you said you preferred the the new Elec SDR to the RTL. Mm -hmm. I was just curious. Uh, why do you prefer that one? So in my experience, when you're running it, and I can't remember the mode, um, non-sampling, non-linear, something like that mode, when you are when you want to uh, run the HF frequencies, the NESDR seems to do better than the uh, RTL SDR. So okay. that's really all it's about, is trying to get as much HF juice out of it without having to run an up converter, although most of the time you need to run an up converter. And keep in mind, the up converter yeah. that's available on Amazon is made by New Elec. So the SDR New Elec company makes the up converter. Well, I guess so. they probably have more experience with that anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, then. Is that it, Taylor? Well, thank you very much. That answers my question. All right, no problem, buddy. Good talking to you. See ya. Well, now the ice has been broken. Let the callers cometh. Okay. Andy shoots St. Louis asks, is there room to cram a battery in that case? It has an internal battery. And it's a pretty big battery considering the very low power consumption of the Raspberry Pi. Um, I... I'm grabbing... Oh, no, I should just grab the manual. Somebody might be able to look it up. I don't have those specs in front of me. No, I'm not going to read through their propaganda paper. Yeah, so it's a laptop. It's a laptop with a standalone battery, um, the whole nine yards. Oh, got another caller. Yep, here we go. Caller, what's up? 
Hey, how you doing, buddy? I just wanted to give you a shout out. Say thanks for all you do here. Uh, oh, you might want to mute mute the mute, mute my video <laughs> in the background for a second. I know I'm turning it down. Sorry. No problem. No problem. Go for it. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm prepping to take my uh, technician's test. Uh, I've been watching your your videos on YouTube. I just wanted to say thanks. Yeah. What's your name uh, again? A lot of help. Uh, Tim. Tim, right on. Okay. Where are you located, Tim? Yeah. I'm in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, right on. That's where um, yeah, Cutlery Pittsburgh. Lover lives. Okay. You've ever watched Cutlery Lover on YouTube? I haven't. He's, uh, he's uh, a part of the YouTube royalty. He's been on YouTube forever and ever. Oh, okay. Um,. I can't think of the name of the fellow that I watched. The first one that I watched, he was he's out there in California somewhere. I know it was Whiskey Six something. He okay. has a lot of videos on on YouTube. Oh, gotcha. Uh, yeah, older, older fellow. Uh, yeah, I've got a, a little bit of an electrical background mm -hmm. on the test stuff. That that's not hard for me, but all the stuff about two meters and 10 meters and what frequencies or what it's all like wow how am i going to remember all this uh, you know so i found um even when i was getting ready to take the test that until i actually started playing around in hf i didn't remember it um i just took the practice test yeah. and, and did the best i could remember as much as i can but until you're actually playing on the bands, it's going to be very difficult to remember all the nuances of it. So don't don't beat yourself up over it if you can't remember every little detail. Yeah, I'm not. I'm I'm pretty comfortable with everything. I've taken the practice test multiple times. I think I could probably pass it right now, but I just got the uh, Gordon West manual. Okay. Uh, today, actually, and. Uh, I just started reading it, so that's going to help. Yeah, it will help. That uh, It's a good book. But, yeah, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I just wanted to say, hey, I'm, I'm, I am I'm just got signed up for that. Uh, what's the, where are you going next? Uh, uh, what's that? Discord. Oh, Discord. Excellent. Discord. Okay, cool. We'll see you over yeah. there. It's a voice chat kind of like this, but it's going to be a big uh, party line, so it's a lot of fun because we've got a lot of uh, characters in there. Whip Grease might even show up this time. Yeah, okay. Oh, no, he's at a hockey game. He won't be coming. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Tim, it's it's Tim, right? Yeah, I, I wrote that down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, good yeah. to talk to you, and I'll talk to you soon over in Discord, okay? All right. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. All right. Take it easy. All right. Okay, let's, uh, let's take maybe another crack at this, and then let's call it a night. Um... Got to think through this whole thing, right? Because it works with the Mac and it works with a, a Ubuntu and it works with Windows. So what's the difference? Do you plug the DMR talk group into the stream? No, I just hold the radio up if people want to call in. But I, I, I've, I tried that a couple of times ago and nobody wanted to call in. Yeah, it's transmitting again. Hmm. Somebody's saying in the uh, chat that likely Tim was listening to W6LG. He has been on YouTube for a while. So it's stuck in PTT mode. I thought for a second. No, no. No. Put the rig on none. Put the rig on none. What the hell is the rig? Oh, rig on none. I see what you're saying. Invalid PTT. No, now it's stuck. Okay, now it's off. 
I called in. The... Oh, somebody's on the other line. Hold on. All right. Okay, caller, go ahead. What's going on? Hey, uh, just uh, watching your live stream, and that was pretty good. I really enjoy your videos. It really helps me uh, get past the test that I took. Thank it was, you. Uh, pretty nice. What, what's your name? David Kaplar. Uh, David, right on. Uh, yeah. So did I you have in, a... Uh, oh, you go ahead. San Diego, so... San Diego, you say. What part of San Diego? Um, kind of like the eastern part of it. Um, okay. Yeah. So HRO is a little a drive for you. So oh, yeah, go ahead. Equipment manufacturers are listening to this. Mm -hmm. They can probably make one of these. A okay. device that can turn a ball fong, or however you pronounce that. I don't really think anyone gets it right. Mm -hmm. um, into an FDR. I think that'd be really cool. The Baofeng into an SDR. I don't know that they can do that. I don't know that it would work. I think it's... The the radio itself is really just for VHF, UHF. I don't think it has the capability. I could be wrong. I don't know. Oh. Well, it'd still be a cool idea for VHF and UHF. Just saying. Well, that's true. I think it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I guess... It doesn't seem impossible. It anyway, seems like we could basically do that with the USB cable that we already have. We should be able to do that. Yeah, I, I've been trying to look at a program for that, but there's none. So I'm not mm -hmm. big into coding. So if anyone right. else is, that would be a really good thing to, for the community. Oh, that's, I guess. that's true. Cool. So cool you're, throwing out, you're throwing out good ideas is what you're doing right now for somebody to take the, take the ball and run with it. Yeah. I'm only 17, so I don't, I don't know a bunch of stuff as much as other people do who have experience no not at all that's i mean that's a good idea it, it's I'm, I'm sure it's in some way possible um because it seems yeah to be... it doesn't seem that difficult i just don't know what like code to put in or anything like that or if there even isn't how to make a circuit board that can do that mm -hmm. that's true because it's just audio jacks on the side of the bell fang, bell fang right uh yeah it's not that it's the um the USB interface. Yeah, that's right? the part that I don't know anything about. Right. So you're you're basically the programming cable is is acting like that USB interface for your Baofeng, and that's a serial to USB conversion that it's doing, or uh, sorry, digital to serial conversion that it's doing. Um, yeah. So software might be able to do it. That's not actually a bad idea. It's possible, I think. Yeah, I just, that would be very cool. So if any coders are listening. Um, That'd be a nice thing to do. Mm -hmm. You're probably not going to so, get a lot um, of filtering. <laughs> There's like no filtering in the. Okay, uh, what? There's like no filtering in the Baofeng, so the uh, the SDRs are going to do a little bit better. But sure. Yeah. Well, they're about the same. Uh, they're about the same price, right? Like twenty five bucks ish. Uh yeah yeah that's yeah I I that's a um that might be a like, technical around problem. that price range give or take. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Some in the chat, it seems people are like, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna work. But uh, well, that's an interesting it was idea. Just an idea. Yeah. No, I like it. <laughs> Always be thinking of new ideas. And that's, that's important. That's the nice part this, about this uh, ham radio community is um, you can experiment, find out what works, what doesn't, and stuff. And that's why I really like it. Mm hmm. No, I agree. And thank you for being a part of it. And thank you for calling in. Are you going to go to the Discord after? Yep. Thank yeah. Thank you for making videos. You really helped me a lot. Oh, appreciate it. Well, thank you. Uh, again, thank you very much. So I'll talk to you in a little bit on the Discord. I'm going to try one more crack at this uh, right. 7300, see if we can get it going. All right. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Take it easy, dude. All right. Bye. Okay. All right, here we go. So we've got uh, rig set to none right now, and I've got it set to Vox. So I'm hoping, Let's let's try this. So um, let's try and get the receive side working, which is the right side of the setting screen first, and get the uh, test cat working before we put this in, into cat mode. So uh, I'm going to set that 7300 here. We're going to leave it on USB 96. OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to OK it. Actually, let's, uh, let's do something here. Let's leave this at default for now. 
it immediately started transmitting. I'm on Vox. No. It's not the baud rate. This thing works on 96 and uh, 19. It works on both of them. It's something else going on. Are we able to change bands? Let's see. No, it's not even able to change. So it, it doesn't have the, the control set up correctly. See? It, it, hmm. Can you check the... Oh, interesting! The clock? No, but that's... No, it's accurate. It's using uh, and oh, I've got it set to NTP right now. I had this uh, image set to NTP on my uh, when I had it set up for SSTV. There was a check cat. You think? You think so? Okay. Um. Let's see. No, it's shut off and it's still stuck. <clears throat> Smiling Dog 70. Yes, these uh, live streams get recorded. They go live or after live, they, they get saved and they go off. Can I just right click on it and say run as root? I don't want to have to go figure this out how to run it in the. Nah, I'm not going to do this right now then. Honor Pie. Anyone. Anyone. Anyone? A check cat button in your setup. Ronnie says a check cat button in your setup. No, it's not that. There's no check cat button. Uh, Brooker, I'm opening the second one. We're going to second beer here. We've crossed the hour mark. When we're right back into transmit. Well, I'm going to have to make a follow-up video when I get this working out. I'm sure it's an easy problem that I'm just not able to fix because my mind is focused on also doing... Uh... Oh, check the permissions on the USB device. That's not a bad idea, too. So it's, it, it's in Vox right now, so it shouldn't even be touching the USB. So, all right, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, there's It has gone beyond my ability to, to make work um, with the... Uh, during a live stream. <laughs> I think that's that's safe to say. Where did it go? Uh, this guy. Who are you? Pit, pie top. There we go. <clears throat> okay, but still, um, we've closed the remote remote down. Yeah, I've uh, I tried that, Wayne. Handshake to none and PTT. No, nope, and RTS is not the right thing to do. You don't want to do that generally. Uh, at least on all the other uh, operating systems I've used. So, um, good question. Juan Carlos asks, any free software for Mac for SDR? Chinese SDR, by the way. Uh, yeah, Cubic SDR um, would be the one that I would recommend. I'd start with that. That would be a good one to go to. I like the Fallout player just said, the foot laptop is that that was kind of the whole point of the stream <laughs> this whole stream has been on this laptop but since you asked so woo, watch out since you asked so nicely um i will again show um i am turning off the call in right now so you can see this so uh again and discord we have a winner so we'll leave that so it's pie top pie top has a raspberry pi built in and it is an accessory panel or accessory um, rail system that you can attach a bunch of cool stuff to it. So I can connect a breadboard or the SDR that I'm going to cram in there. Uh, it's got a speaker in it right now. That's the Raspberry Pi. How's this feel? That's a little warm. Doing a pretty good job cooling it down, though. 
but it's a Raspberry Pi laptop. So you can do all kinds of cool stuff. And as was already mentioned in the chat, instead of stacking hats on top of each other, you kind of space them out horizontally, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, no, the antenna that's actually connected to the SDR Play right now is a wideband receive antenna, so it will do 80, but um, it doesn't transmit very well. It, it needs, to, needs to actually, I think, transmit a little bit better. There is a review coming out for the uh, Radio Waves hex beam at some point, and I've got a lot to talk about. I think it's a good company. I think it's a good antenna overall, but uh, some things you had to work on to make it work. The, the beam of the hex beam is... Who just texted me with that? What? Oh. So, um, I thought that was a, a YouTuber that just texted me. <laughs> so, anyway, we're going to leave it at that. This is a bit of a rambler, but I had a lot of fun. I need to figure out how I make this maximize the screen. It looks like there's a lot of space still available. I think that's because of how I have the config.exe or the config uh, set on this. So I will fix that. Believe me, I'll probably make another video where I get WSJTX uh, running on this. And actually, I'm going to use this on my activations, I think, because or, or wherever I take it out in the mobile because uh, it, should, it should have very good battery life, which is exactly what you want from a laptop particularly one you take out for ham radio. All right, guys, I am going over to uh, the Discord, and please hit subscribe, hit that bell if you have not already. Check out the Facebook page, the Ham Radio Crash Course. But like I said, I'm going over to the Discord. Somebody asked really quick, is that running a form of Linux? Yes, Raspbian, which is a uh, Debian uh, Raspberry Pi-specific port, Raspbian. So, yes. And generally, it pretty easy to get it loaded with that oh cool zach sent me a message so already see that's how the discord and how the ham radio crash course works lots of people looking out for you so make sure you join it and check it out no i did an update uh yesterday so this is a brand it, it's a brand new raspberry pi but the image that it's running is uh is up to date it's pronounced hold on let me do it hold on let me do this um it's pronounced De debian it's pronounced Debian. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, guys. <laughs> I'll do it. I'm going over to the Discord. I'll talk to you later. See ya.